Hey folks, I'm back with you. We're going to do part two of the load development of my Ruger Precision uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. And this one is all on the seating depth node testing. Um, did this test uh, about a month and a half after the last video you saw on the uh, velocity node testing. And I think you're going to be pretty surprised at how well it turned out. Um, I did use Eric Cortina's method. I, I didn't follow it to a T. I think Cortina, and I don't know if this is his method or if he borrowed it from somebody, um, at least he's made it famous. Um, you know, I think he says you start 20 thousandths off the jam and then go in three thousandths of an inch increments and you'll find your node. Um, since I've been shooting these Nosler RDFs, um, they have, you know, with the Ojive of, of a lot of these, uh, very high BC bullets, you know, with the, uh, I think they, it'll be a tangent or a hybrid, uh, Ojive. Don't hold me to the tangent, but, uh, it's a, it's a very streamlined bullet. <laughs> but anyway, a lot of people say that with that type of bullet, they will work better either in the jam or just slightly off. Um, I want to give a shout out to Dan Deutzman of our, uh, Marine Corps league shooting team. Dan is a, uh, he's a weapons builder. Um, uh, he's double distinguished and he's the coach and he's been working with Nostler and the Marine Corps team, active duty Marine Corps team quite a bit. And he loves these Nostler RDFs. He got me turned on to him. Uh, that's why I'm shooting in my service rifle at the 600. I'm shooting the 77 grains there. Uh, for my 6.5, I'm shooting 140 grain, but essentially it's the same bullet, just a different weight, uh, different size. And he actually told me, he said, I'll just, just load it 30 thousandths off the jam. You'll be good. Hmm, I don't know. We'll see when I look at the board. But anyway, you know, like I said, we're going to start at the jam. We're going to work back in uh, three thousandths of an inch increments. And uh, let's take a little look at the board and see what we got. So there's the board. Uh, like I said, this test was done about a month and a half after that velocity node testing. Uh, this was done in early September. So obviously we had a, a little bit different atmospheric conditions. Uh, temperature was a little lower. And on this test, we had a density altitude of 2030. And uh, when we did the velocity node testing, it was, I think it was 2,441. Um, we had an average velocity total of 2715. And these were all fired with the same charge uh, that we found in our velocity node testing. And we were using 43.7. Um, like I said, the only thing we changed was the uh, seating depth. So something interesting by doing this test that far apart and having the uh, density, altitude, and temperature difference, it allowed me to calculate, and I don't, it's probably not linear, but it allowed me to calculate what kind of difference I'm going to see in feet per second per temperature degree change. And we'll take a look at that on the uh, spreadsheet from the velocity node testing in a minute. But anyway, we'll get back to the board. I started right up here. That was in the jam. Everything up to this point, I've been shooting at magazine length. So measured it all out. We started in the jam. Each one of these is three thousandths of an inch off. It's interesting in Cortina, when he talks about this method, uh, he says, you're going to find a really good node, but don't stop there because you will find two nodes together a little later. And if we look at this, I think we find like, yeah, it's right here. That's a pretty good node. That's a good three shot group. And like I said, these were all fired in round robin fashion. So one shot here, one shot here, one shot here gives everything an equal amount of time, you know, equal amount of opportunity to screw up. But that right there is a really good node. But look at that. That's not such a great group. We'll look over here. And that's not really a great group. Um, we take it on down and we get down to right here. That is a phenomenal group. I would estimate that to be, well, let's not even estimate that group. Let's see if I can show it to you here without messing up the camera. That group is actually, it's 0.194 inches wide. That's from the edge of this bullet hole to the edge of that bullet hole. And it is, oh gosh, I don't know. It's, it's 0.144. 
uh, a little over 0.1 inches high. So what is that? You know, that's about the, a ragged hole of, I don't know, about, about a 35 caliber bullet. Um, then we get right over here. That is a really good group. Uh, so we've got these two together. Interesting on this is that that average velocity had fallen off. Um, what was it? We had the average velocity of 2715. I don't have a, an ES or an SD on all, all of this. I just have it for each group. But that was the highest uh, extreme spread at 28. And this one over here was uh, 13. Um, at 18 feet per second difference between here and here. And what do we have here? That was 2711. So I don't know why that one fell off. Um, and like I said, these were fired round robin, but I really like that group. And what's interesting about that group is that's where, I, that's where I'm loading right now, 27 thousandths off. That's 30. As I experience barrel erosion, I should erode from here into that 30, so I'm still good. How much barrel life do I have left in this rifle? I don't know. Um, I've got roughly, uh, I'd have to look at my book, but I think I've probably got five or 600 rounds through it. So I'm probably a little over a quarter of the of the barrel life on this thing. It It's factory barrel, it's not the best that I can do. And uh, But you know, it's what I'm shooting right now. This is what I'm running with right now that I'm saying that is my seating depth node, 27 thousandths off. And that one was 30. Let's go here and look at the computer a minute. Some calculations I did based on all of these velocities, that temperature, and then what I had versus the uh, seating depth node test day is that I should see about 0.35 to 1.26 feet per second per degree of temperature change. And that works out to what, 1.61, so 0 0.805 feet per second, so less than one feet per second per degree. And Gordon's reloading tool says 0.792, so 0.792 and 0.805, that's pretty close together, so around 0 0.80 feet per second change. So that's what we've got in part two of this load development that I'm doing for uh, the Ruger Precision and 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, there will be a part three. I'm working on some of the stuff for that right now uh, here in East Tennessee. It's been pretty cold, but next week we're supposed to have some nice temperatures back up in, the, I think, the mid-60s, maybe upper 60s. And I really like testing, you know, somewhere from, I don't know, 67, 68 degrees up to about 80. Um, I've got a bunch of bullets sorted. Uh, we're going to, we're going to shoot everything, all the bullets that are going to be within a thousandth of an inch. The, the sorting method that I'm using on those is, uh, based on Ojive length. Uh, Brian Lentz said that's, if you're only going to sort one way, he said, that's the way you should sort. So I'm not going to go through the, the bother of measuring them. Uh, these things have such a fine tip on them that I'm not going to do any uh, meat plat trimming or anything like that. I'm just sorting them by the uh, base to Ojive. But anyway, I'm going to set up a target board like that. I'm going to fire a mock match where uh, I'll take four to ten. I'll take four to ten ciders, get the barrel warmed up, make sure our zeros are good. I'm going to fire it at 100 yards. Those are uh, one inch circles, but I'm going to fire two or three shots on each little dot uh, until I get to 20 rounds. So uh, two, two would be good, or maybe shoot 21. Um, and I want to see how the impact point moves as the barrel temp changes. But anyway, that's going to be part three of uh, accurizing and load development for this rifle. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you got something a little bit educational out of it. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. And remember, kids, X's win matches. Keep the greasy side down. Y'all have a good one.